I'm Sonic, a little ball of super energy in an extremely handsome package. Guys, we did it. I just never get tired of winning. What's going on everyone? Jeremy here from The Corner. I've got a full schedule of videos for you today. We've got the Sonic video. Then at 2 o'clock, I'm going to have... I'm warning you to get your hazmat suits out because Lily Painfully Unfunny Sing tried to do a roast last night. And it's as... I mean, as bad as you thought it could be, it's, it's so much worse. But I want to start out today with a huge shout out to all of you who showed up, showed out for the Sonic movie because ooh, we've got some excellent performance numbers. And on top of that, and on top of that, the critics, oh my goodness, the critics are so salty. I've even had uh, some of the critics take direct shots at me, or at least this space of YouTube. Maybe it's a little narcissistic to think it's for sure about me, but you'll all be the judge because Kentucky will be salty. All right, so we see the Mendelssohn article. Online outrage turned Sonic the Hedgehog into a big box office hit. Now, one of the things a lot of people aren't talking about, which is a fair point, I think, is that the outrage in and of itself, and maybe not necessarily the redesign, certainly added to the amount of people that knew about the movie. The Sonic movie got millions, and I mean probably tens of millions of dollars, maybe maybe even more, of free advertising with everybody on YouTube and Twitter talking about it. So we all became aware that the movie was going to exist. Now, what were you going to do after everyone knew about it? That's what mattered when we transferred to the box office. And as many... Hollywood experts are talking about it. The movie is overperforming. And of course, that's a direct result of not just the free advertising the horrible design got, but the fact that they committed to correcting it. Online outrage turned Sonic the Hedgehog into a big box office hit. The online outcry over the Sonic's first uh, Hedgehog trailer caused Paramount to fix the title's character design give and give it what turned out to be a much more beneficial release date. Now, I don't believe that the movie performed this well simply because of the date, but let's see what Mendelssohn has to say. Sonic the Hedgehog starring Marsden and Jim Carrey raced to the top of the box office this holiday weekend and earned a superb $58 million Friday through Sunday for a $70 million four-day total. It's the biggest Friday to Sunday launch ever for a video game movie, second when adjusted for inflation behind, behind Angelina Jolie's Tomb Raider. Good reviews helped, as did the fact that the audience's young and old wanted to see a Sonic movie, but the film's most significant source of pre-release controversy accidentally gave the movie a big boost. Yes, I'm talking about the creepy, more, quote, realistic Sonic animation that caused a ruckus after the release of the first trailer. The outcry caused course correction and what turned out to be a very beneficial date change. As you recall, the first trailer featured a more humanoid version of Sonic, debuted late April, immediate online outrage. Sure, everything caused uh, reactions and outrage or snark these days, but the outpouring of dis disapproval was strong enough for the director, Jeff Fowler, to take to Twitter and assure folks that he would 
fix it. Now that is a fair total, a fair, um, how do you say, a fair assessment of the situation, which is rare for Mendelssohn. But what did that turn out to? Well, according to C CNN, I'm sorry, Hollywood Reporter, who, oh, thank God, uh, Overseas Sonic Hedgehog launched 43 million from its 40 markets for a global total of 100 million through Sunday and 111 million through Monday. Top markets included Mexico and the United States. The uh, UK, I mean. The $87 million film, which received an A cinema score, is based on Sega. Yes, we all know how it was based. Sonic quashed its next closest, next closest rival, DC's Birds of Prey, which fell to two in the second weekend, with an estimated $17 million over three days and $19 million in the four-day frame. Their troubled superhero pick, tumbled 48%, a steep drop for a holiday weekend to finish money with a domestic total of 61 million, internationally took in 23 for a total of 83. So let, let me be clear. Birds of Prey looks like it's going to lose money. 83 million total. I think the budget of the film was just under 90 million, if I remember exactly, somewhere in the 80 to 90 million dollar range. And then you usually... The rule of thumb has always been that you double that to include marketing. Now, is it potentially possible that they didn't spend the normal amount? Sure, but it's also equally potentially possible that they overspent that same amount, which means you need to be the 200 to $250 million uh, range in global box office to be profitable. So it looks like pretty, I mean, I'm pretty confident that Birds of Prey is going to lose money, which is zoiks. And again, that sucks. Make no mistake about it. I don't have anything against the Harley Quinn movie in any way, shape, or form. If it wasn't for me, which it clearly wasn't, that's okay. It's obviously allowed to exist. And I want these comic book movies to be more interesting and more uh, gritty. Uh, the R-rated series is just, I prefer that. So it sucks to see DC lose that much money. But it was their own fault. I mean, when you've got... You've got uh, a movie that really didn't deserve to exist uh, in the fact that, sure, people knew who Harley Quinn is, but nobody, and I mean nobody in the general public, is really familiar with the Birds of Prey unless you read the comic book. The movie itself also really wasn't loyal to the comic book in many ways. And when you've got you know people coming out saying it's a movie about toxic masculinity, I mean, you know that the opening weekend when Birds of Prey came out, there were still more men there than women. So women didn't even show up for your film. And you know why? It's because, just to be honest with you, these type of movies just appeal to men more often. Yes, of course, lots of women see them, but it's just not an even percentage. It's just significantly more men. So when you start putting out marketing that's going to make men roll their eyes, well, that's what you get. You're going to lose money, and that'll probably be a video uh, for later today or tomorrow. I want to let it collect some more money so I can be more confident in calling uh, the time of death for that movie. But, you know, the media itself isn't happy about it. This started back in May. Sonic the Hedgehog's hasty redesign is a bad sign of things to come. Okay, look, I need to set this article by making it absolutely clear and upfront that I think Sega and Paramount truly crapped the bed with their horrendous design for Sonic the Hedgehog in the impending live-action movie. But then they go on to talk about, to whine about how, uh, you know, fans had more power and the entitled fans. Then we can look at BBC. From Sonic the Hedgehog to Star Wars, are fans too entitled? Nothing boils my piss more than calling people that pay to see the movie entitled. Okay, we're the customers. All right. If you're going to release your film for free, you might, might have an argument here. But no, we're ponying up the 10 to $20 to see the movie. Okay. We're buying the merchandise. We're buying the popcorn and soda at the movies. We're buying it when it's on DVD or, or, or streaming purposes. So yes, we have not just some right, all the right. Is it that hard to understand? And then every time some clown writes an article like this, it just gets worse for Hollywood. The Sonic, which whizzes into the cinemas today, no longer possesses the full set of human teeth, blah, blah, blah. And then they go to talk about 
the last dec decade or so witnessed huge changes in awareness, perception, and tools of the fandom. In the terms of television and film, the enormous success of Game of Thrones and Marvel Cinematic Universe has introduced geek culture and its brand of participatory fandom to the mainstream. At the same time, the internet and more specifically social media have ampli amplified fans' voices while also breaking down the boundaries between the artists they love and hate. Now, this in general is true. Now, I I don't think that superhero movies really represent nerd fandom. There's some mainstream abomination, um, but it's fine, obviously. Um, and, and this article goes on, you know, when fans bite back. On the other end of the spectrum, they even rely on them as investors. A famous example being the 2014 screen revival of the cult detective drama Veronica Mars, a sequel made possible by the crowdfunding efforts of fans. Dang, why are they so entitled? You know, pre-paying for something that they don't even get? God, the entitlement on these people. Um, with the latter series, the equal partnership dynamic started to become complicated. However, with certain fans recoiling in horror when the creator Rob Thomas ended off the love interest Logan, to quote the journalist Constance Grady, writing for Vox, Thomas, they said, had taken advantage of their desire to see Veronica and Logan together, using their investment as shippers to leverage not just their time and attention, but literal dollars out of their pockets. In that case, didn't he owe them something? Yes, of course he does. Of course. And you have the Star Wars, female Ghostbusters stuff. Again, you're going to talk about fan entitlement for Ghostbusters. You've got, I mean, I've got a $500 Ghostbusters Lego house behind me. I have a right to voice my opinion with what you do with the franchise because you don't own it. The fans do. And you see this article on Kotaku. Then came the reveal of Sonic's original design. He was tangled little thing with small eyes uh, and human-like teeth. It was shocking. This was just released the other day. It made me feel like Sonic the Hedgehog would probably be a disaster. The internet contingents of both good, hearted, true blue blur blurheads and less well-meaning 40-year-old YouTube opportunists that rant about Captain Marvel. Hmm. Who are you talking about, Heather Alexandria? By the way, I'm nowhere near 40. Now, she's probably referring to this YouTube space. And I think it's funny when you call YouTube opportunists. Like, bitch, hold on a second. All right, hold on, hold on. We cover what's trending in the news, just like any hack would on Kotaku. We do the same thing. It's part of our job. We are all, by definition, opportunists, you absolute idiot. And then you get wholesome Jeff Fowler. Just want to finish the video with a huge shout out. Jeff Fowler coming out saying, We tried to make Sonic movie for everyone from an amazing core fan base of almost 30 years to an entirely new version generation. Seeing these stats make us feel incredibly proud. We might have succeeded. And then you see Ben Schwartz, a voice. This Forbes review of Sonic Movie is wonderful and heartwarming. Thank you, Paul Tassie. Ooh, Paul Tassie getting a shout out. I mean, I love it. Go Sonic Go. This is early on. Sonic the Hedgehog runs faster with a four-day $64 million plus total. Go see Sonic. Go tell your friends about Sonic. Continue to listen to the fans, Hollywood, and you will continue to be repaid. And to those that will complain... Get woke, go broke. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.